this video is going to help um, discuss the six rules of the Rescorla Wagner model. Once again, what the Rescorla Wagner model is, is that it is a mathematical model to predict classical conditioning trials. We'll either have an excitatory outcome, inhibitory outcome, or no conditioning will take place at all. To go over this, uh, the six rules here, I'd like to use the classical conditioning example of getting a shot and then being scared of the, uh, of the person in scrubs. So imagine that you go to the doctor, you get your shot child, let's say, gets a shot. They respond, unconditionally respond, fear of the shot or in, because of getting the shot. The condition stimulus is person in scrubs. That person in scrubs was paired with the delivery of getting a shot and so all we have to do now is present the person in scrubs, the condition stimulus, and the child will respond with fear of person in scrubs, which is of course the um, conditioned response. So rule number one, if the strength of the actual U.S. is greater than the strength of what the subject was expecting, the result will be excitatory conditioning. So let's say the child has never had a shot before. He goes to the doctor and he gets his shot and it hurts way worse than what he was expecting to have happen. So therefore, we have a, a true good outcome, which is excitatory conditioning. So we would, from this example, expect to have conditioning take place, a very strong pairing um, of the shot and the conditioned stimulus, which pair, which in turn caused excitatory conditioning to happen, i.e. the child being scared of the person in scrubs. Rule number two, if the strength of the actual U.S. is less than the strength of the subject's expectation, the result will be inhibitory conditioning. So the child goes to get the shot, and what happens when he gets the shot? The, the getting of the shot was actually what happened and what he experienced was less than what he was expecting to have happen. So inhibitory conditioning occurs. So there's actually probably a weakening of the connection between the um, getting the actual shot and the person in scrubs. Okay, so the third rule, if the strength of the actual U.S. is equal to the strength of the subject's expectation, there will be no conditioning. So let's say the child is told, you're going to get a shot and it's going to hurt. And the child, when he gets the shot, it hurts exactly like what he was expecting to have happen and to feel. So therefore, no conditioning took place at all. Rule number four. The larger the discrepancy between the strength of the expectation and the strength of the unconditioned stimulus, the greater the conditioning. So the example I gave um, for rule number one was a really good example of there being a very large discrepancy between what the child was expecting and um, then, of course, the actual U.S. So the kid's mom says, you're going to go and get a shot. The kid gets the shot. She says it's going to hurt. He's expecting it to hurt. But this happens to be one of those shots that you get it and it has to go in slow and the medicine you can just actually feel coming into your skin and it burns um, and it's just very, very, very painful. So the kid knew it was going to hurt but he had no idea it was going to hurt that bad. So there was a big discrepancy between what the kid was expecting um, to have happen and the actual strength of the U.S. So the final outcome is greater conditioning. Very, very strong um, excitatory conditioning outcome here. Rule number four, the more noticeable CSs will condition faster than less noticeable CSs. So a noticeable CS in this example would be, let's say our nurse who delivered the shot, the person in scrubs, wore um, just a very, very bright, hot pink pair of scrubs. That is very noticeable. Everybody in the office wears those, you know, just regular blue scrubs. And this nurse happens to be wearing the very bright, hot pink scrubs. Very noticeable. So conditioning will take place faster with the more noticeable CS opposed to a less noticeable CS. The final rule, if two or more CSs are presented together, 
So two CSs in this example could be a person in scrubs and um, let's say a bell that goes off. This, what the subject expects, the subject's expectation, will be equal to the total strength. So it will be equal to the total strength of the bell that goes off and the nurse in scrubs. Rule number six seems a little difficult to understand for some people, and I want to um, encourage you to turn in your textbooks to page 80 and 81 and read um, the examples that are used for over-expectation and overshadowing um, for these final rules here. And that should help um, pairing lights and tones together as two different CSs and um, when one of the um, CSs is taken away, were they expecting to have both, and so on. So take a, take a few minutes to read those examples, and I think that will definitely help with rule number six.